You find your own way All you gotta do is Just show Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Showgirl Tip of the Day podcast. Today's episode, we are talking about money, honey, show business. The thing that a lot of folks don't tend to realize about show business is that we are a project-based industry. You could work for a producer and get a weekly paycheck. You could do a long-running show. Let's say you're on the Broadway, in the Broadway cast of Moulin Rouge. Every week you get a paycheck for your eight shows. What happens is if you're doing a regional production, that run could only be 11 weeks or six weeks. That's all you get paid for. You get paid for rehearsals most of the time, which you should be, and performances. And then when that show closes, the job is over. You have to find your next job. So many of us have support jobs. This is why I have Showgirls Closet, because I like to work for myself and I enjoy selling vintage clothes. It makes me super happy. I choreograph for people. I teach. I have a teaching job at a performing arts conservatory in Manhattan, and I also teach for several studios. That's how I keep the wheels turning. Oh, and I do my own shows all over the tri-state area and New England. I have 11 one-hour, one-woman shows, which are self-contained. I perform them anywhere and everywhere. So I have multiple sources of income because sometimes, like in the summertime, the dance studios are not having regular weekly classes. And sometimes my conservatory is not having classes. They are off or they're on a break in between semesters. So money always has to be coming in because it's always going out. The trick is to have more money coming in than is going out. When you have more money going out than coming in, then that's called being in debt. Credit card debt is a big problem for a lot of Americans. And um, having a credit card is not necessary, but sometimes, you know, if you want to rent a car, you want to book a hotel room, sometimes you need a card to put down. Making a budget is really important to keep track of where your money's going. And then for me, make a list of all the discretionary expenses. So that could mean entertainment like movies, streaming services, books you buy, going out for a night on the town, going to restaurants. That's something that I have cut out of my budget unless it's for a birthday or a special occasion. Things that I used to do regularly, nail salons, I have cut that out. The last time I had my nails done was last June, right before I went to Portugal, and I haven't had them done professionally since. I just keep them clean, I file them, I cut my toenails, that's about it. And I have saved hmm, uh, several hundred dollars, I have to say, because it's an expense I don't feel like I need to have right now. I unplug everything when I'm not using it. The microwave, the lights, my TV. The only thing that I keep plugged in is the internet. I have a special guest today. Her name is Kate Caden and she has a channel on YouTube and the channel is about saving money and being frugal. Now the word frugal, it doesn't mean having a like a Spartan life. What it means is knowing where your money goes so that you choose what to spend your money on. She helped me pay off a credit card just from watching her channel. During the pandemic, I really enjoyed her videos and she's a fantastic person. She's also a choreographer. So without further ado, let me show you, let me put the audio on for my special guest for today, Kate Caden. I hope you enjoy. So happy to meet you in person. Or you in- too. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Thanks for having me. I know we've been trying to do this forever and I'm like, all right, we're just doing it today. 
I appreciate it too. So I have this podcast and it's for people in show business. You don't have to be a performer to listen to it. My goal with the podcast is to help performers, you know, just give them tips so that they life is a little bit easier for them. So they don't have to learn the hard way. Like I had to learn some stuff, you know, but one of the things I haven't talked about yet is finances. And we have a project based career. So some of us do work other jobs as support jobs, but let's say you, your income comes from doing shows or films or whatnot. You get a pile of money and then you have to live off that until you get your next job. So you run Kate Caden, the YouTube channel, which I subscribe to. And during the pandemic, I really got out of credit card debt, which was crazy because during the pandemic, people were spending money out of boredom and whatnot. But I learned a lot from your channel. What advice do you have for people? I want to talk today in particular about having an emergency savings. So what are your thoughts about that? So yeah. Oh man. So there's a lot (laughs) that I'd love to talk about with this. I could talk to you for hours on it, but okay. As far as like the emergency fund, well, first of all, I I think, you know, I was a choreographer. I am still a choreographer and I, there was always a time, like when I was a studio manager for a bit, I always had like an office job, like on the side before I was a studio manager. But like when I was just teaching, you always have to, you know, make ends meet. And so I understand like the whole artist life where you get a pile of money at one point and then like, maybe you don't have another show for a bit or, or whatnot. And so you've got to figure it out. My biggest, biggest thing that I always start with is creating your budget. And I know for artists, and performing artists, we're, it's it's kind of like you think I can't have a budget because I don't even know I have an irregular income, right? You think I can't budget because I don't know this week I might have this, this month I might have this. But I would truly, truly recommend creating a budget. I use every dollar. I use that app, but you don't need that. In fact, on the channel right now, we're in the middle of a six-part budgeting series. So if anyone's listening, head to my channel to listen to that. But if you budget and you, for all the artists out there, round down, you might think like, oh, well, I might make you know 2000 this month or I might make 3000 go low and estimate on the lower side. If you happen to have more, which would be fantastic, then you can put that money toward, you know, emergency fund, debt. You really want to get out of debt too, because the less that uh, you have carrying over your head, that would be great. But yeah, budgeting is where it all begins for me. When you started budgeting, did you see like a huge difference? Oh yeah, because I realized how much money I just threw out the window on things like Dunkin' Donut runs. Oh yeah. uh, Nail salons, going to Marshall's, shopping for me was a distraction, entertainment, something I would do with my daughter when she was still living at home. She's all grown up now, but we used to love to go to Marshall's and pick through the makeup and, and, you know, there goes 30 bucks just on a Sunday afternoon and it doesn't have any, the the dollars have to mean something is what I learned from your channel is like every dollar has a job. Yes. And that, that creating that budget and knowing how much is coming in and then assigning every dollar its job will really help reel it in. And then I know some people hate budgeting, but I swear it has been the biggest tool in my financial freedom that I've been able to utilize. It's the biggest and the best tool in my toolbox, if you will, you know, to uh, live a life where we're not stressed constantly about money. Yeah. And I love your channel because you take, yeah, you take money and you put it into a perspective where a lot of people are like, oh, I'm no good with money. And then it just, they they never get out of financial distress because they're not good at it. And it's something that you can learn to be good at. I used to tell myself the same thing. I'm not good with numbers. I'm not good at math. And all the math truly that you need to know, my son already has it and he is nine. You need addition and subtraction. And I don't mean that to infantilize anybody listening. It's not, but we make it so complicated. You're going to take what you earn and you're going to subtract what you're spending. And that's what, you know, it's not, it's not as complicated as people think. And if you 
like I said, you've been watching the channel, you'll see, I have hours of frugal living tips. If artists are listening to this and they're looking for ways to kind of cut costs and just be very mindful of their spending, please head over and check out the channel because I have hours of content that can help you with that. And I, like you were just saying about an emergency fund, that is crucial in building an emergency, especially if you are in the arts or anybody, because then no matter what happens, you have that safety net. And if you have that safety net three to six months of expenses, it's going to really help you sleep at night. And it's going to be less stressful in all situations in your life when you know you have that backup. Thank you, Kate. So Kate Caden is on YouTube. Kate with a K, Caden with a K. I know you're busy. So I just wanted to have you on my podcast. I'm hoping we can do another episode sometime where we talk about you and your dancing and how you now have this channel and Your channel is part of how you earn a living also. So I would love to do a deep dive into Kate Caden and how you started everything because I really look up to you and I think you're fab. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle. I am honored to be here and I would love to do that with you in the future. And everyone that is listening, I hope you come visit the channel and say hey. Thank you. The Showgirl Tip of the Day podcast has original music composed by Joshua Holloway. Find him on YouTube, Joshua Holloway Music. This podcast is written by Michelle Bruckner and edited by Michelle Bruckner and Joshua Holloway. Find me on Instagram, Showgirl Tip of Day. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again next week with a new episode. Oh,